Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. It's funny, I did... I'm pre-recording some videos. I did something called What's in the Box Part 1, looking through a box. And at the end, I'm like, hey, if you like this, let me know if you want more. I haven't uploaded that yet, but yet I'm doing another one. So I guess it'll be a twofer. And if you want more, I'll do the rest. But was, again, looking through boxes, trying to figure out what movies are in this one. Because I forgot. <laughs> I think I show them on camera. So again, it's sort of a, a form of a DVD collection. DVD and Blu-ray collection. <coughs> so, the box we have is over here. And first off, I mean, I've shown these in a collection where I talk about uh, movie trailer compilations. I love movie trailer compilations. Apparently in July, there's going to be more from Umbrella Entertainment, which I really look forward to those. And speaking of Umbrella Entertainment, this is one of their releases. Driving Delirium, the new batch. I, 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 I'm a sucker for movie trailer compilations. I love watching movie trailers on YouTube. But I like it because it's a play-all. And this has quite a few stuff. I think it's over three hours at least. Plus you have VHS Delirium, which is a bunch of VHS trailers. And on this one you have stuff from The Green Slime, The Dark, Meteor, Extra, Altered State, Sound Rage, to Missing in Action, Attack for Z, Death Valley, Terror in the Isle, City of the Living Dead, Dark Age, Razorback, The Howling 1 and 2, The Being Chud, The Exorcist 1 and 2, Firestarter, Pet Cemetery, Breaking 2, Amazon Women on the Moon, Cannibal Run 2, The Man with Two Brains, and many others. I always wish they did a trailer compilation for 90s movies. That's why I seem to realize with all these trailer compilations, it's only films from the 80s or before, like the 60s or 70s. But is there some rights issue to not do 90s trailer compilations? Because I know there will be an audience for it. I guarantee it. I would bet money. Will it be action movies? Again, I don't know if it's some... <clears throat> why no company has ever done that. And again, is there some kind of copyright thing for 90s movies? <clears throat> you can't tell me there's no interest. Many f people like me love many films of the 90s, so... That's driving to land the new batch. <clears throat> Shock, Ve Shock Festival, Stephen Romano. This is one of the lesser trailer compilations. There's some decent trailers, but it's a three disc set. The third one is mainly an MP3 of radio spots. Disc one and two. You get some nice trailers like Treasure of the Four Crowns. The late great planet Earth star Orson Welles. So I'm glad I have it for the collection. <clears throat> if you like trailer compilations, sure. Pick it up. Uh, trailer Trauma, which apparently there's supposed to be a Trailer Trauma 5. Uh, at one point going to be in July, but I guess maybe at the end of the year. They don't know what the... Well, they know what the idea is. Like the, the theme. But I asked, and they pretty much told me, nope, not going to tell. I don't know why. Well, what's the secret for it? <laughs> but Trailer Trauma 4, this has a bunch of TV spots. Uh, about 268 TV spots of various films. <clears throat> Trailer Trauma 2, Driving Monsterama. This is one of my friend Michael Keane, the choice for his, He, You would be really interested in this because... Uh, this seems, it was cool to watch, but I mean, you have stuff like Count Dracula and his Vampire Bride, a Vampire Beast Craves Blood. It seems like the, the era that the Hammer films were made in, I'm not saying these are all Hammer movie trailers, but I'm just saying that sort of uh, time period. The Gorgon, Devil Within Her, Torture Garden, The Lost Continent, Land of the Minotaur, Creature with the blue hand, the theme with two heads. Guess what happened to Count Dracula? I mean, most of these films I've never heard of, which makes the interesting to watch the trailers for this. Then you have Trailer War, 
love the artwork on these. Uh, this one is about about two hours long. You have Inframan, which I love. Uh, I, I think it's Black Bill Jones. I forgot what Jim Kelly film it was. Thundertop, Stump Rock. Uh, really nice looking uh, quality. And it's from the people who worked at the Alamo Draft House. And there's actually a commentary from them, which is pretty cool. And a little interview with Joe Dante, who used to edit movie trailers back in the day. <coughs> this is the best trailer compilation to get, 80s Horrorthon. If you did one trailer compilation, get this and get it before it goes out of stock because this has an insane amount of 80s horror movie trailers going year by year. I mean, it would take you more than one day to watch all this. It's 439 minutes. <coughs> so, you know, if you have a day off, maybe it would take the whole day, but it's like seven and a half hours of 80s horror movie trailers, and they look beautiful. I think they're pretty much 35 millimeter trailers. I mean, this is, again, the best movie trailer compilation out there. <coughs> Another driving delirium. This is maximum 80s order drive. As you see, you got the Chuck Doors film. I know what it is. Why am I going blank on it? Invasion USA. Friday the 13th. Some of those films. Almost four hours of nonstop movie trailer action. So, again, I'll, I look forward to the, the new Driving Deliriums. Yeah, it's supposed to come out, I guess, in July. Let's, uh, let's see. These are just DVD-Rs. Like, this is Rest of Horror. Like, I, I tried to find a bunch of 80s horror movie trails that were not in that compilation. So this is sort of like a, my own bonus disc that I tried to burn. How did you burn? How did you burn? And then a fistful of trailers. That was something on. Uh, it was on YouTube at one point. A lot of Western movie trailers. And then Trailer Trauma One. This is a really good compilation because a lot of these movie trailers you can't find on YouTube. Like Deathbed, the, the teaser, Savage Weekend, Hysterical. Fingers with Harvey Keitel, Dr. Frankenstein on campus, Dog Tats, which looks like a w creepy Vietnam movie. What was the one I was thinking? Nine Deaths of the Ninja, Stoner, Trick or Treats from 1982, Knights of the City, Smokey and the Good Time Outlaw, Smokey and the Hot Wire Gang. There was one, I'm trying to remember what the hell the name of it was, but it seemed like an interesting idea for a film. Castro Murders, Black Fist, Penitentiary 2, Homebodies. Homebodies is like this group of old people that's being evicted from their home. It's like an apartment complex in the middle of the city, and these old people start murdering people because murdering the people that are evicting them. Again, I don't know if you can find the trail on YouTube. A lot of these I couldn't. Back in the, like Dark Sunday, which looked interesting. Sunday in the Country. <coughs> oh, this is a DVD-R. Monster Mania. That was uh, something I remember watching on VHS back in the day with Jack Palance narrating the history of monster movies. But you have, this is Driving Delirium Volume 1. There were more of these volumes, but they're so, so expensive to, to pick up. And some of them are just out of print, so I was lucky to find this one. It's, I get a lot of movie trailers on multiple, but it's a four DVD set. Like Nature Gone Wilds, so you have trailers for Night Elite, Frost, 
Phase 4, the giant spider invasion, Evil in the Deep, Eye of the Cat, Bug, Squirm, Grizzly, Team of the Spiders, The Worm Eaters, Tentacles, Empire of the Ants, The Pack, The Uncanny, White Buffalo, Orca, Long Weekend, The Swarm, Piranha, Killer Fish, Fish, Up from the Depths, Alligator, Venom, Great White, Jaws 3D, Blood Kill, The Stuff, Link, Sluts, Killer Crocodile. Like, <clears throat> it's in sections like that, which is cool. Again, I would love to pick up the other ones. But these are impossible to find, the other volumes. And if you did, they'd be expensive as fuck. <coughs> and then we have... This is a... I found this on eBay a long time ago. It, it was very dirt cheap. I think this was like a bonus disc and a pack. But it's 45 movie trailers from Full Moon Entertainment. Again, I'm a, I'm a sucker for movie trailer compilations. And then 42nd Street Forever... One and two I have on DVD-R, because I couldn't get the DVDs for them. But you have three, which has The one Armed Executioner, Jaguar Lives, Enter the Ninja, Gorp, Teen Frat, uh, Tattoo, High Ballin, Savage Streets, Guy in a Cult of the Damned. You have Volume 4, which has stuff like Combat Cops, No Blade of Grass, your Hunter for the Future, The Boogeyman, Grey Eagle, America Thong with John Ritter, Rituals, The Soldier with Ken Wall, March or Die, I think Gene Hackman was in that, Hog Wild, The Chicken Chronicles with Steve Gutenberg, and others. Like Coach, which I think has Michael Bean in it. And then this is five, the Alamo Draft House Cinema. Chatterbox is about a talking pussy. Yes, I'm not I'm not kidding. Three Supermen in the West, Redneck County, Moon Runners. Moon Runners was actually the original Dukes of Hazard. And they had to get the rights for that to make the Dukes of Hazard TV show. And then when the movie came out with Johnny Knoxville. The reason that budget was so high is because they did not know about Moon Runners. They, as I like, wait a minute, you had to get our permission too. You did it, so cough up some money, motherfucker. Uh, your movie ain't getting made. <laughs> and uh, I learned from that on the commentary track. Yeah, some of these actually have. Uh, yeah, all these have commentary tracks, which was cool to listen to. And then Forty Second Street Forever, the Blu-ray, which has a shitload. 225 minutes and a commentary and it's cool because they try to give a little bit of info on each of these movies as best as they can concerning how fast they go but yeah I love these kind of things I love to get as many as possible <coughs> next up uh, looks like this is hmm, it's a mixture of different stuff Including, huh, including some Jason Statham. <clears throat> some of these I had picked up for dirt cheap for the collection and maybe one day to do a Jason Statham marathon. But Redemption, uh, not that bad of a film. Jason Statham gives a good performance. Redemption, not all roles lead to salvation. Um, Actually, this was a gift from my mom, because she knows I like action films, The Mechanic. She didn't know that I disliked this one, but uh, and some of them might not be all here. I think some of them are on Blu-ray, and they're probably in the Blu-ray, wherever the Blu-ray. Oh, they did mixed up, and I don't know, It's it was hectic. But, yeah, this, I'm not a fan of this movie, but whatever. Safe. Not everyone likes the film, but I do. I enjoyed the flick. It has its flaws, but overall I did like the film. I don't agree with that. It's not his best movie, but I like it. Blitz, one of his more underrated films where him and this other officer go up against a serial killer who is a cop killer. Uh, I thought this was pretty decent. Not many people talk about it. This was for cheap for the collection, In the Name of the King, A Dungeon Siege Tale, Uva Bowl. I mean, you have John Reese Davies, Ron Perlman, 
Tristana Logan, Matthew Lillard, Ray Liotta, Burt Reynolds, and starring Jason Statham. Hell of a cast for a shitty movie. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, okay, here it is. I was, I was wondering if I had it. Good, I, I did put it in the section. The Canned Resurrection, which I think is a much better sequel than the first one. This is a much better movie than the first film. And probably the last great Jason Statham film, honestly. But yeah, this is... <coughs> so, I've had questions, people go, well, what's a film that's better than the first one? Or you like that you hate the first one? This is another example. Like The Purge Anarchy. I hate the first one, but the sequel was much better. And then we have Crank. Now, this Crank 2, I remember this Blu-ray fucking up a little bit, which is why I kept the, the DVD. I don't know if it would be fixed now, but for some reason I remember this Blu-ray being a little bit of a fuck up. I don't know why, though. I remember, like, putting it in, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what's wrong with this fucking thing, man? Yeah, it could be wrong, but I have to pop this in again, but... From what I remember, there's something off about this Blu-ray, which is why I have the DVD here. Uh... Oh, I, I have these over here because Jason Statham was in them. Furious 7, where Statham was the villain. And then The Fate of the Furious, which I liked. A lot of people did not like this film, but I enjoyed it. Yeah. I think someone sent this to me. Yeah, someone sent this to me. Chaos. Really disappointing because there was supposed to be Jay-Z Statham versus Wesley Snipes. They never really, they never have a fight in the movie. And it's more fucking Ryan Felit's movie, which why? Yeah, I remember this being pretty damn lame. Of a flash. Yeah, I think some of these were gifts from my mom because they knew I, she knew I was a fan of the guy. She's a fan of it too. Homefront, which I remember not liking this film. But hey, for the collection, I, I'll take you for the collection. I like collecting movies, it's, if they're especially if they're cheap or free, of course. But this one, I always forget Sylvester Stallone wrote the screenplay for this. And this was not a good script. I'm sorry. Sly. Parker. Might as well be Porker. Because it go fuck itself. There he goes. It dropped the fucking thing. Wayne Film. Wild Card. This is one I gotta give another shot. I know it's, it's a remake of a Burt Reynolds movie, I believe. I forgot what the fuck movie it was, though. Remember a couple of the action scenes being pretty decent. <clears throat> but I want to give this another shot before I give a thoughts on. <clears throat> Death Race. I enjoyed this movie. I thought it was a good remake. I always forget Paul Wall, Stanley, and Anderson did this movie. I always forget that. Because I think I, I mentioned like Soldier. That was the last good one. And I, I forgot about this. But I do like the film. Blu-rays of The Transporter and The Transporter 2. I love these movies. I think these are two of Statham's best films along with Crank and Crank 2. I don't think they have features though. Which is why I still have the DVDs. The Transporter? And The Transporter 2. And yes, I have this for the collection. Transporter 3, this is a piece of shit. This, I think this is one of those, it was like a dollar or something. If I ever want to do a Statham marathon. Oh, I have the DVD of Crank, okay. Oh, I just decided to keep the DVDs because... 
it's not like you don't get much for the DVDs if you sell them. What, you don't get 50 cents? I'll just keep the thing then. <clears throat> okay, so... Where do I go next? So, first I'm going to put this on top of here. Yeah, definitely some stuff mixed up in this. <clears throat> so it'll be all over the place. Yeah, Cat's Eye, Good Stephen King Anthology, Casper, Fun Kids Foot, which I enjoy. Got this. I have Child's Play separately, so I got this for Terry. I like Terry. It's definitely the best of the Terry movies. Definitely better than the remake. Catch and Release. The only reason I have this is because Kevin Smith's in it. And he does a commentary with the director. So I, I like Kevin Smith back in the day. Nowadays, I think he's lost his touch. But, uh... I got this as a gift long ago, and I still haven't opened it yet, so I think because I was waiting until I do, if I ever do a series of reviews on the vacation films, but that's National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. This is a classic movie. I do love this film. Captain Ron, fun movie for the cast, Kurt Russell and Martin Short. They're both entertaining in the flick. Cameron's Closet. I think I first heard about this from my friend Mike OCP, and he really enjoyed the film, and I saw it, and I liked it. For what it is, I liked it. It had some nice special effects, and I thought the cast worked well in the movie. Interesting idea, but Cameron's closet. This is a four-pack, The Abandoned Autopsy, The Broken, The Butterfly Effect 3. I think I got this because The Butterfly Effect I swear I remember renting the Butterfly Fit 3 one time, and I'm like, wow, this isn't that bad. But I haven't seen it in probably 10 years. Well, I don't know. I don't know when this came out. So, well, 2009. So, probably, yeah, probably when it came out. So, I have to give it another watch. The Burbs. Love this film. I think it's a classic comedy. My favorite Tom Hanks movie. I know it has a Blu-ray in the U.S., but I'm fine with this. Love the birds. <coughs> I forgot I had this movie. I think I got this for cheap to give it another look and to see if it was better. But it wasn't. Bulletproof Moth. This movie I saw in a theater. I was pissed off at. So I picked it up for like, again, cheap. To see if it maybe got better with age, and it didn't. Horrible wire foo ripoff of the Matrix. Uh, lame plot, bad CG, stupid dialogue about hot dogs and hot dog buns, and a waste of Chow Young Fat. A waste of him. That's probably one of the reasons why Sean William Scott doesn't work anymore. Doing movies like that. <clears throat> Bubble with Tip. Great flick. Really enjoyed this movie. Weird, quirky, and it had a heart to it at the end as well. <clears throat> Brutal Massacre. This is a fun film. It's a fake documentary where this crew is making a horror film and you have. Gunnar Hansen from Chainsaw Massacre. You got Brian O'Halloran, Dante from Clerks. That guy right there with the hat is David Dalton from American Wolf in London. You also see Ken Foray, Ellen Sandweiss from The Original Evil Dead. Um, yeah. Pretty fun flick. Yeah, about the making of a horror movie. I did not pay $12.99 for this, but that's The Bounty Hunter. I thought this was actually pretty entertaining, because I thought these two worked well together. I thought Joel Butler was having fun with the role. They didn't mind this flick at all. I'm fine with having it in my collection. I like the film. This is a film I remember, I, I think I saw this in the theater back in the day. 
boogeyman. I remember not minding it. I mean, I can understand why people don't like it. I'm not going to defend the film, but I remember liking it because I liked the lead guy. I uh, kind of liked the story that was being told. And how he has to search this house for what happened when he was a child. And I don't know. I, just, I remember not minding the film. But I know this is one of those movies that you do, you would like find everywhere for like a dollar because everyone gave their copy away. <laughs> but I liked it better than the sequels. The Boogians is a film I really want to like, but I would just end up being meh for me. I don't get what the fuck he means by energetic. There's nothing energetic about this movie. I thought one of the problems was that it had a slow pace. So I don't get where Wally Energetic fucking comes from. Oh, okay. I find it funny that it's a quote, but there's no one fucking listed for making the quote. Even here, it's just the company, the stars, story directed by. Yeah, so no one made the cover by Nelson. I think this is a this is a DVDR. That's this is before the film came out officially. But yeah, while Energy Monster movie, I guess the movie itself is telling me that. But yeah, this is a film I wanted to like, but. I was disappointed in it. Um, this is before I got these films on Blu-ray. But the, I have this because I like Body Snatchers of Bad Moon. Coma I haven't seen in a while. Wolfen is a piece of shit. Um, so. But yeah, I like these two movies. This movie sucks dick. I did a review of this film, Margo, The Bogus Witch Project. It's a pretty bad parody. There's a couple of chuckles I still got get out of it. It's an anthology movie that I think it's an anthology comedy, and there's a couple of stories I don't mind. But overall, it's I liked it more when I was a kid than I did uh, when I reviewed it. It wasn't that long ago, I don't think. Uh, this is one that someone had sent to me. Curse to the bite. And it has some pretty good special effects, and that's a pretty neat cover. So, yeah, the effects are pretty cool in the film, I'll give you that. Bill and Ted's Most Excellent Collection, the two movies and a lot of features. Uh, this is one of the best things Shout Factory has done, because they get interviews with almost anybody you can get, especially including Keanu Reeves. So, and you have commentaries for each film. They look good, picture quality wise, like the presentation. So yeah, this is one of their better releases, Shop Factory. The Birds, one of my favorite Alfred Hitchcock films. I've reviewed this on the channel. Um, oh, okay, I had... Was this a gift or... Fuck, I can't remember now. See, it's not opened. I had this film on DVD. Either I got this as a gift or I picked it up. I can't remember. And haven't had a chance to open it yet. But I do love this movie. It's one of my favorite comedies of all time. The Bill Lebowski. Uh, I think this is absolutely hilarious film. Body, body Parts. I have a review of this on the channel. Very, very underrated. Deserves a Blu-ray, 100%. But it's Paramount, so they're a pair of pricks. This one, these are okay, the Blue Collar Comedy Tour and Blue Collar Comedy Tour Rides Again. The only reason I have this is because I like Ron White. Ron White is the only guy I like. The other guys, I think, are not that funny. But Ron White, I think, is pretty hilarious. And, yeah, Ron Wright, I think, is the most talented of the group. And, again, yeah, that's the only reason I have these. 
I have some of the stand-up specials somewhere around here. Yeah, we can fix your looks. You can't fix stupids. Blowout. Granted, I'm not a fan of the ending, but it is a very well-made, well-acted movie. It has a really good uh, direction by Brian De Palma. I like that the character was an audio technician that gets sounds for horror movies. I thought that was an interesting job for the character to have. You also have John Lithgow as the villain. So it is a well-made film. It is a good movie. Despite not being a big fan of the ending, it's a good movie. Bloodwork. Clint Eastwood film, really, no one really talks about it. I remember it being decent. You have Jeff Daniels, Paul Rodriguez, Angelica Houston. Eastwood directed it as well as starring in it. But yeah, I remember this not being that bad of a film. But yeah, it's a film no one talks about. I do have this film on Blu-ray somewhere, but The Blob. One of my favorite films of all time. I have multiple reviews of this on the channel. This film is fantastic. It deserves a huge special edition by Street Factory. There's no reason that this doesn't have one. Blindside. I like this. I like Sandra Bullock. That was a good drama. Blazy Saddles, one of Mel Brooks' best films. Very funny movie. There we have Blade Runner. I have this on Blu-ray. I think it's over there, but this is the four disc collector's edition. I would like to get the Blu-ray set of this, but it's just too expensive for me, and I'm fine with this. So I do like Blade Runner. I just don't think it's one of the best sci-fi films of all time, but I do like the film. And I still maintain I like this film better. Blade Runner 2049. I think it's a better movie than the first one. Certainly. This is a film I got a lot ago because I like the actor. But this film is one of his worst. Not a fan of this film. It's pretty much a takeoff of Kid in King Arthur's Court. He just knocked out, he wakes up in medieval times, and I don't know, movies who do that, like the only film I liked that did that was Army of Darkness, but the others, I don't know, it's just, maybe it's the time period I'm not a fan of, that time period just never interested me, I don't know, just hilarious my ass. I, I do think it's one of Martin Lawrence's worst films. Let's see. Try to make room for this. Well, I guess this is uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger stuff. <clears throat> it's not all of it, but some of it. Collateral, Collateral Damaging Eraser, two great Arnold films. I don't know why they don't have separate Blu-ray releases. Oh! So it's how stupid I am. Usually they do that as on one disc, but I forgot. So, okay. I give points to them. Warner Brothers. But yeah. I always have the two I like Eraser more, but I think these are two damn good Arnold films. Really good flips. Oh, and I have the DVD of Cloud Damage. Okay, it does have the features. I guess I just kept this because I like the movie. I think this is one of Arnold's more underrated films. Last Stand, the last good thing Arnold did. Sad to say this film bombed. Did not deserve it, but I enjoyed this film. One day I want to do a Schwarzenegger marathon. And because of that, for like 50 cents or a dollar, this piece of shit. One of Arnold's worst fucking movies. I still think it's one of Arnold's worst fucking films. This film, I hate... It's a piece of shit. All the characters are shit. The dialogue is shit. The action is shit. Might as well be sabotaging Arnold's film career. Something that's not shit. Total Recall. Great movie. Now, uh, Fabio, 
my good friend the other day did a video mention asking if this existed. I'm like, it does, because I have it. Because he was looking for this, the metal case. He's like, did that even exist? Am I going crazy? I'm like, no, you're not crazy, because I have it. This is the, apparently this is rare to get, to have the this metal. I mean, it's Terminator 2 on a 2 disc, but this is metal. Come in. So, yeah. So I didn't know this was rare, but I'm, I'm glad to have it. Patent pending. What fucking patent? But yeah, this is the metal slipcover T2. <clears throat> Commando. I don't know why the director's cut's not on Blu-ray. I mean... Uh, I mean, which do I like that? I mean, really, it's just a couple scenes that I'm like, all right, and then some extra gore, teeny bit. So, yeah, I like the director's cut. Dude. Like, yeah, I don't know why it's only on DVD, but not on the Blu-ray. But one of my favorite Schwarzenegger movies. And then The Running Man. This is the DVD, which is a piece of shit because the special features don't talk about the film. One of the worst special editions ever. And then having the film on Blu-ray. And for some reason, they had to put the American flag in the back. For some stupid reason. And yes, this is from Olive Films. Last Hatching Hero. Granted, this is from Mill Creek Entertainment. I think they released this on Blu-ray as well, but I just picked up the DVD. Got this because it has the better cover. Usually, you just have Arnold with, like, a gun or something, but, like, his face. But this is, this is an underrated film. I, I like, I reviewed this years and years ago. Whenever I do a short set of film, I want to defend this film a little bit. This is a fun movie. Not as bad as its reputation. Now, this is Junior. Bad idea. I mean, we don't want to see Arnold pregnant. I do remember getting a couple chuckles out of it, and I think it's not the worst movie ever, though. And I don't even think it's the worst Arnold film. I'd rather watch this than Sabotage. Because at least I like the cast, and it's goofy, it's silly, it's harmless. I, I'd rather watch this as Sabotage. I'd rather watch that than Killing Gunther. Now, this is one of my favorite Arnold films, End of Days, which I have on DVD and Blu-ray. Love this film to death, saw it in the theater when it came out. This is an excellent, under Arnold's most underrated film, in my opinion, is End of Days. You're a fucking choir boy compared to me. A choir boy. True Lies. I don't know why the fuck this doesn't have a Blu-ray. James Cameron needs to get the head out of his ass. Stop worrying about Avatar 2, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 11. Get this on Blu-ray first. And don't do some stupid fucking TV show that they want to do. How about you have this on Blu-ray? And this was a nice gift from a, a nice guy from overseas. Because this actually has a couple features. I'll grab their features from back in the day, but at least it's something. Bare bones, nothing in the U.S. They should have a special edition with features on a Blu-ray. No fucking reason why it doesn't. It's one of Arnold's best films. Uh, my favorite comedy that Arnold did, Jingle All the Way. Quite enjoy this film. This is a fun movie. I reviewed this last Christmas. No, not last Christmas. Maybe last Christmas or Christmas. Uh, one of I I review this on the channel. Hercules in New York. This is actually the one with Arnold's dub voice. Well, not Arnold's voice because when they put it in the U.S., they dubbed his voice. But this actually has the original voice, so it's actually Arnold speaking. And yeah, you, you can see why they did a dub for him. All the right things in all the right places. So, uh, Hercules in New York, pretty damn bad. Pumping Iron. Never saw Pumping Iron 2. I know Arnold's, I don't think Arnold's in it, but this is a pretty good uh, documentary. Well, documentary, I'm sure there's a lot of embellishments too, but this is still pretty fun. His rivalry with Lou Fredno. Uh, Arnold did show the charisma in this. And it's quite a few features as well. 
so this is a pretty fun movie. I actually want to watch this again sometimes. So. Conan the uh the, the the Barbarian the Destroyer. I wish the original version of Conan the Barbarian was available. If you try to if you can find the old old DVD, keep it. Because the new one where they extend the ending and do some other changes, I don't care for. I like the original theatrical version of Conan the Barbarian. I wish that was available somewhere. It's like the Warriors. I wish that was available somewhere, but you know, this is the two of them, and it's like on one disc. I do like the Conan movies, and this is. I actually like this more, the sequel. I like Conan the Barbarian, but this one I watched more when I was a kid. Maybe because it was like an adventure movie as well with his. Like this is. This is by Lord of the Rings, I guess. Because it's him and his group of people, and they're on a journey. And there's sword and sorcery, and Conan's fucking people up, and tearing horns, and shoving them up asses. And not really. Fuck out Will Chamberlain. Kills a wizard. So I, I like this film a lot. Red Sonia. I only as bad as people make it out to be. Granted, Brigitte Nelson's acting is not. I'll pick her over fucking Captain Marvel, I'll say that. So and over Dark Phoenix, so Bridget Nielsen's is not looking too bad nowadays, but I, I had fun with the movie for what it is. Uh, the Terminator, my favorite Terminator film. I've reviewed these on the channel because I reviewed all the Terminator movies. Um, this is actually uh, a Blu-ray someone sent me a long time ago, which is very nice. T2 Judgment Day. This is the Skynet edition. Terminator 3, still have this on DVD. <clears throat> Not a big fan. Some of the action scenes are good, but... And also, I gotta say, Dick Stahl was a pretty solid John Connor. I gotta admit. But, the humor... Arnold, one of the weaker Arnold roles for as the Terminator. Unneeded, I think that's the best thing. Unneeded, he didn't need a Terminator three. T two ended it perfectly. Red Heat, fun buddy cop film. These two worked well together. What do you do for stress, Vodka. I don't know why this film doesn't have a Blu-ray. Twins. Twins is a classic. So why the fuck does this not have a Blu-ray? I don't know if it does overseas. If it does overseas, you let me know. But in the U.S., Twins is not on Blu-ray. And I don't understand that. But this film does. Fun movie. Kindergarten Cop. Entertaining film. Total Recall on Blu-ray. Classic. And I... This actually has a newer documentary on it compared to that DVD. Yeah, Total Recall. Classic film. <clears throat> this is one that someone sent to me to do a review of, and I wasn't a fan of it. Aftermath. Again, they sent it to me to do a review. I just wasn't a fan of this movie. I understand R wants to stretch his acting talents, but this film just did not do much for me at all. I found it rather boring, anticlimactic, in a way, too slow paced. Arnold wasn't bad. It's just the rest of the movie was lame compared to Arnold. This is Commando on Blu-ray. Again, I don't know why they don't have the director's cut on Blu-ray, just the theatrical cut, but okay. And no feet doesn't even have the features. That's the thing. That DVD has features. This just has a trailer. So, yeah, I don't know why. <clears throat> this is a two-pack. I do have Maximum Overdrive on Blu-ray and a separate DVD. But I got this for Raw Deal. Raw Deal is one of those movies. It has a fun action-packed ending, but maybe I need to give Raw Deal another chance because I can never get into Raw Deal. Six Day. I like the film. It's pretty decent. It's not as good as Total Recall or The Running Man. 
but it's definitely better than the shit he does nowadays. I just don't think this needed to be PG-13. I would prefer this to be rated R. He does have a good line. Why don't you clone yourself so you go fuck yourself? I do like that. And a good cast, too. I mean, you got Michael Rooker, Terry Crews, Tony Goldwyn, Michael Rappaport, Robert Duvall. Pretty good cast. And Predator. This is the DVD with the features. And this is the first time it was on Blu-ray. It's not the best, best picture quality. It doesn't tear over the features. But it's still a lot better than the DNR bullshit that came out after. Apparently, they fixed it. But you have to have a fucking 4K or what iTunes or something. So yeah, if you want a, just a Blu-ray... You can't have Predator on fucking... Fuck you. Fucking Fox. I'm glad you got bought out by Disney. You Fox. You Fox fucks. You put fucking Predator on Blu-ray twice, you fuck it up. Oh, we fixed it, but you gotta have a 4K. Fuck 4K. 4,000 times. Give a fuck about 4K. I'd be in a fucking 4K. Fuck you. How about that? That's my answer. Fuck you. Now, this is a series of films that uh, maybe one day I'll review. You know, Children of the Corn, which I like. This has Children of the Corn. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Why they're so goddamn me, I don't know. And this is the remake that was on Sci-Fi Channel. Where the fuck? This is a bad movie. And they made more, so I don't know why the fuck there's so goddamn many Children of the Corn movies. That would be fun if I ever do that. Charlie's Angels 1 and 2, I know they're making a new one, but I like these movies for what they are. They're turn your brain off. I see it because I like the actresses. I like the sexiness. They're sexy in the movie. Uh, they're hot. They play off that very much. And they're goofy, silly, fun films, in my opinion. I just don't take the films that seriously. I, I can enjoy the films for what they are. Cat's Eye. Someone has sent this to me long ago. Uh, there's elements I like. I like John Hurd. Um, I was kind of mixed on this movie, to be honest. Cat People. This film I love, The Changeling. Love this movie. One of my favorite ghost story films. Definitely one of my favorite ghost story movies. I know there's a fuck up, so then they had to... That's why there's two Blu-rays in this. I just kept it, because... Why am I going to give someone a fucked up Blu-ray? I just, I just kept it just because... So, because these companies don't know anything about quality control. But one of my favorite ghost story films, I have a review of this on the channel. I love The Changeling. This is a film I want to watch again. Chain Reaction. The Vanishing, I don't remember much about. I know it's a remake. With, a, with more of a happy ending, which I know people are pissed who like the original because they like the downer ending. And they didn't like that this had a happier ending. The Chain Reaction, I remember not minding as a time waster. Kind of a lesser known, a lesser quality, The Fugitive. As from the same director, The Fugitive. But I remember not hating the film. I remember being a decent flick. Celtic Pride, it is what it is. I, I can watch it, but I wouldn't call it a good movie. This is a film I wanted to give another shot because I like this, the descent and it's The Cave. Got this for very cheap. This is when I was working at the video store and I think it was when it was going out of business. So I picked this up because it was for sale for cheap. That's why. And I keep this because it brings me back. You know what, despite the complaints I had working at the video store, I think with any job you have complaints. But in retrospect, 
it was, it was the best job I ever had. Because I got to work around movies all day. So I do miss that. The Cell, I, I believe I do have a review of this on the channel. Very underrated film. Visually beautiful movie. I uh, love the direction. Just a really good looking flick. Really beautiful imagery in this movie. Underrated film. I only gets the... It doesn't get what it deserves. These some sent me because I think they want me to do a marathon of these movies one day. Resident Evil, which of all the films is the most decent one. At least it has a good score by Marilyn Manson. It's the, it's the most tolerable one. Resident Evil Apocalypse, which tried to do the Resident Evil 3 video game. But Nemesis looks like a short fucker for some reason. Even though technically he's tall, he still looks short because they filmed it in a stupid way. Resident Evil Extension, I don't know what the fuck they were going with with this movie because it's Mad Max. And it's from the director, Russell Mulcahy. And he has, she has Jedi mind powers now. And the whole world is a desert. Now... Remember that. The whole world is a fucking desert. They show the earth turn to a fucking desert. But in this movie, does that look like a fucking desert to you? And they mean more. So maybe one day I'll, I'll fucking dip my fucking anger out on these movies because I like the games. I played the games. I grew up with the games. Resident Evil 2 and 4 are my favorites, but I like the the first one, the third one. Uh, I didn't play the new ones because I don't have the new systems for it, but I know there's more than just this, but fucking shit, man. Okay, next up, we have Alienation Anyone Mine. Two good flips. Alienation is a bit underrated. No one really talks about the film. I know James Caan hates it for some dumb reason. But I like these two movies. <clears throat> All About Steve. I got this because I'm a Sandra Bullock fan. But this is an awful movie. They probably wanted Sandra Bullock's worst performances. I think she won a Razzie. And she actually accepted it in person. Which I thought was pretty funny. But uh, yeah, this is a pretty bad movie. Alligator, I don't know why this is not on Blu-ray. It's bullshit. But this is a great, great creature feature film with Robert Forster. Alter States, I did review this on the channel. Solid flick. I don't know if this has a Blu-ray. If it doesn't, it deserves it. But pretty trippy movie. I like William Hurt's performance in this. Along came Polly. I like the film. You know, it's a romantic comedy. I could be a sucker for them if they're good. I thought Ben Stiller and... I like Jennifer Aniston. I know some people don't. I do. You also have Hank Azaria. Brian Brown from FX is in this. Uh, Phil Seymour Hoffman. Alec Baldwin. Yeah, I like the film. That was cute and gave me quite a few chuckles. I can't believe I have these. Don't fucking ask me why. You know the first one I thought was kind of cute? I think that's why and I got this, these because I'm like maybe... Yeah, I thought they were cute. I didn't grow with that one, the chipmunks. I thought they, they were cute for what they were. I like Jason Lee from Mallrats and... Dogma. I like Jason Lee a lot, but man, yeah, and they did more of these. And 
American Tip Boxer 2. I know there's an American Tip Boxer 1, but it probably doesn't have much to do with this. I remember this being one of those movies where it's just like every five minutes there was a fight scene, which I liked. I can't really remember anything about the actors or the story or the plot. I just remember there's a lot of fighting in this. Which, to be honest, in this kind of movie is what you're looking for. So it kind of did its job. You know? American Psycho, really good flick, one of Christian Bale's best performances. To me, the best one is Equilibrium, but this is up there. Really good performance by him. The Amityville Horror did not need a franchise. I know there's like 50 of them now, including the offshoots. My friend Michael CP, he has a lot of work cut off for him because he reviewed some of them. You have about 50 more, Mike, to review. <laughs> Are you going to review them? I only have like the first one, and I think I think I have the second one somewhere. I only I think I used to have the remake. I don't have it anymore. Like I don't have any of them. I'm not going out to buy all fucking fifty of them pieces of shit. Anaconda saw this in the theater back in the day, and I enjoy it as a creature feature film. I liked it. I liked the cast. I like it. This one I saw in the theater too because I liked the first one, but this was a step down. Not as bad as Anaconda 3 and 4. 3 had like David Hasselhoff in it, but uh, this was a letdown from the first one. Let's see. I know I have the sequel to this somewhere. I don't know where it went. But this is Analyze This. I swear I have the sequel to this somewhere. I do remember liking this more than the second one, though. I do remember this being a better movie than the sequel. But again, this is from Harold Ramis. May you rest in peace. American Wolf in Paris. I wanted to give this another look. Some of the worst CGI... It's not a four-star movie, I'm sorry. Some of the worst fucking CGI, man. I did not mind Tom, Tom Everett Scott in the role. I, I wonder what this movie would have been like if the effects were actually good. That'd be an interesting experimentation. If you took the same movie you have actual decent effects, will the movie be as hated? That idea, yeah, that'd be an interesting uh, experiment that no one will do. And Justice for All, excellent Al Pacino film. If you like Al Pacino, if you like great movies, this is you, a must-see film. Love it, love it, Justice for All. Angel Heart, good flick, really nice cast, Mickey Ward does a wonderful job in his performance. Ants, I like the film, I actually like it more than A Bug's Life. I know there's some shitty behind the scenes shenanigans where they kind of stole the idea from A Bug's Life and then they hurried up to get in the theaters first, but I still like this film. I reviewed this when I did my Stallone marathon, because Stallone has a voice in it, so there is a review of this up on the channel. Animal House, fun movie, fun comedy, one of John Landis' best movies. Paul 13, one of my favorite Ron Howard films, great flick. Radnophobia, I do have the Blu-ray of this somewhere. The Blu-ray actually has a spider there. I always thought this cover was stupid because it looked like people were afraid of the fucking full moon. But I love this film to death. Incredibly underrated. Deserves a special edition. Armored. I remember this being a decent time waster. I know my friends did not like the film, but... I, the director did a better job here than in Predators. It's the same director, Nimrod Antel, which... He disappeared after Predators. I would too if I made that piece of shit. But I remember this being decent.
but it, uh, I thought it was a decent time waster. Armored. I mean, you have Matt Dillon, John Rennell, Lawrence Fishburne, Steve Ulrich, uh, Fred Ward. And The Arrival, one of my favorite Charlie Sheen films. The DVD actually has a few features. This is a gift from a nice person overseas, because this actually has some features from back in the day. And then this is the Blu-ray. Yeah. But this, the sequel is awful, but this is great. Again, one of Charlie Sheen's best movies. I would say underrated as well. Bad Santa, one of my favorite comedies. This is a hilarious film. Bad Santa 2 is really lame. Bad Taste, fun Peter Jackson flick. Not as good as Meet the Feebles or Dead Alive or The Frighteners, but good flick. You know, cheap, but fun. Ballistic X vs. Sever, this is a time waster. It's not good. But Ron Tomato said this is like the worst film ever, and it's not. It's just simply not the worst film ever. It's not good, but I like these two. Some of the action scenes were fun in a dumb way. It went at a decent pace. It's only 91 minutes long. Again, this is not a film I would defend. It's not good. It's just not the worst movie of the 2000s or whatever the fuck that uh, Rotten Tomato said. I can name a hundred more that are worse than Ballistic X vs. Sever. People say this is the worst film. You haven't seen a lot of movies. You really haven't. Have you seen The Arrival 2? Or The Descent Part 2? Or Feeders? 1 and 2? Or fucking Alien Origin? Or The Zombie Diaries? Batteries not included. Shitty cover. I wish they just used the original VHS cover, which is a much better with these aliens. The, the little robot aliens coming in through the window and the two old couple are sleeping on the bed. That's a much better cover than this. This may look like a Nickelodeon movie. But this is a good heartfelt movie. That no one really talks about. Batteries not included. Film I remember watching quite a bit when I was a kid. Let's see, Dragonfly. A lot of people hated this when it came out, but I really enjoyed it. I thought this was a pretty damn good flick. I never really understood the hate for this film. In fact, I want to watch it again. Dreamhouse. I did. I don't think it was as bad as people made it out to be. I know it had some production issues, but I watched it. And I'm like, I don't think it was that bad. I like. Daniel Craig in the film. I like the story it was telling. And I want to watch that film again, too. Dream Steep. I know there was a Blu-ray that came out. Maybe one day I'll pick it up. But I remember this being alright. Okay. Had uh, some nice visuals in the third act. Dennis Quaid was good. This is a film I'm surprised they have not remade. I'm not saying they should. I'm surprised they have not remade it. Well, they kind of did. It was called Inception, but... Um, I know, really enough, this came out right before Elm Street, and they both feature a dream killer with stuff coming out of his hand. Which I thought was kind of a weird coincidence. Then we have... Dream a Little Dream 1 and 2. And honestly, I like the sequel more than the first one. This one I wanted to like because I like the Corys, especially Corey Hayden, May Rest in Peace. This one I just found boring. I did not care for the story where Corey Feldman and Jason Robards, they switched their bodies. They switched their bodies, but yet, I don't know, it's kind of a funky plot. Corey Haim was barely in the film. I don't know, I just didn't care for this. This one is sillier, but I had more fun. This deals with uh, magic sunglasses. And, again, I, I like this more than the first one. But For the Corey collection, Drive 
This is a film when I first saw it, I'm like, I'm not sure what to make of this. And it became a favorite of mine. This is a fantastic film. This is a film that when I first saw it, I'm like, I don't know, because I had not... In that time period, there were not a film, a lot of films like this. I was like taken aback. I'm like, this is a fucking good movie. It really is. Did I watch? I didn't even know the shot. I'm like, this is a really good film. Excellent movie. Drive Angry, fun flick from the guys who did the My Bloody Valentine 3D. Film bombed. It didn't deserve the bomb. It's a pretty fun time waster of a flick. Dude, where's my car? I'm actually surprised they didn't do a sequel to this. Because this was a surprise hit. I thought these two worked well together. It's silly. It's over the top. It's goofy. But there's some pretty uh, laugh out loud moments in the movie. Duel. Great film by Steven Spielberg. Wonderful movie. Easy Money, one of my favorite Rodney Dangerfield films. Ed Wood, one of my favorite Tim Burton films. Eddie, it's a time waster. It is what it is. I mean, yeah, I don't love it, I don't hate it. I, I do watch it. It's okay. I'm gonna chase some real quick. Fucking dogs keep barking. Shut a fucking corn cob up their ass. Stupid dog keep barking. But shut the fuck up, dogs. I care about your bullshit. Bullshit to live it. Encino Man, silly, but I found it fun. I like the cast. I like Pauly Shore, at least his early work. I was entertained by this movie. It has in a duffel bag. I actually have a review of this film. It's okay. It's worth a watch if you like Joe Pesci. And David Spade has a, a role in this as well, but... Again, if you're a big Joe Pesci fan, it's worth one watch for him. He's pretty funny in it. The rest of the movie, yeah. Not as good as Joe Pesci himself, but... Again, I have a review of this on the channel if you're interested. 2012. Entertaining Roland Emmerich movie. It's cool to see John Tuzet as the lead of this kind of movie. I like the massive destruction. 127 Hours. Beautiful film. Uh, it kind of made me tear up a little bit at the end. Um, easily James Franco's best performance. If you're not a fan of James Franco, I would still say give this a look because I think he could surprise you in this movie. Great story based on a true story. Fortune Away. Uh, really enjoy this flick. Sadly, I think if you get the Blu-ray, you get the bullshit ending where he dies, but it seems like only this, you get the good ending. And I think there's a two-disc DVD that has that as well. But I guess if you get the Blu-ray, it has the bullshit ending. Not the theatrical ending, which he lives. So that's why I have to keep this on DVD, so it's fucking stupidity. I remember I picked this up long ago because I'm like, ooh, Al Pacino, I like the idea. He only has 80, min 80 minutes to live because his killer threatened him. He's like, you're going to die. And maybe it's going to be filmed in real time, like, uh, what was that movie, Nick of Time with Johnny Depp? Nope. Because the director's a hack. John Abnett, you're a hack. You fucked it up just like you fucked a righteous kill with him and Robert De Niro. Fucking hack of a fucking director, man. What a dumbass.
I have reviews of these on the channel. 28 Days Later, which I saw in the theater back in the day. And 28 Weeks Later, which I think is a step down from the first. But I did. I do have a review of these on the channel. 1941, I don't hate. I like the film. I like the scope. I like the ambition. And uh, I don't think it's Spielberg's worst film. Now, this is actually called Aberration. It's from 1997. I don't know why this doesn't have a release in the U.S. It's a pretty underrated creature feature. I have a review of this on the channel. It's these little lizards. It's, uh, how the hell do I describe the plot? Just find the trailer for it. This is a film that is, again, it feels like an 80s movie in a good way. And it has some really good gory special effects. I thought the cast worked well together. And a film that, if again, if you like 80s type of movies, definitely worth a look. Aberration from, again, I think 1997. This, this deserves a release in the U.S. It's bullshit that it doesn't have one. <clears throat> Abominable. I've reviewed this on the channel. To me, one of the best movies dealing with Bigfoot. Great flick. The Abyss. I do enjoy The Abyss. I like the theatrical... Let me put it this way. I wish there was a cut where you have the special edition, but the ending was the theatrical cut. Just the theatrical, theatrical cut ending I prefer. I much prefer the theatrical cut ending. I'm not a fan of this, the day there it stood still message. I'm not a fan of that. I like the idea that the aliens just helped Ed Harris because they were just decent guys. And they saw the message. And they were, oh. He's going to miss her, and she's going to miss him. You know, we don't do it just from... That's how I... That's When I saw The Abyss, that's how I took it. Like, the aliens saw the message, they went... You guys love each other. Okay, we're going to do it. And that's it. That's all you needed. You didn't need this fucking waves. You better do this or else. I didn't like that shit. So, again, if you had the long cut... But then the ending was the theatrical cut. That's the version I want. But uh, there's no cut of that. But either way, The Abyss, I don't know why this doesn't have a Blu-ray. It's funny, of those 1989 movies, that's the film that gets a Blu-ray. Which makes sense, because to me it's the best, in my opinion. So... That goes to show you how good Leviathan is. Of the 89 underwater movies, that's the only one that gets a Blu-ray. So, I'm glad for that. Next up is a film I want to give... I enjoy this film. I want to watch it again. Matt Damon, Emily Blunt, and the Adjustment Bureau. You also have Anthony Mackie. And I remember this being a really interesting story about fate how fate is planned, and then they're trying to fix fate, and these two are on the run. Good by sci-fi thriller. Definitely a film I want to watch again. I think it came out the same year as this. And I, I remember this being a good year for sci-fi movies. Some really interesting stories being told. Can't have that nowadays. Yes, the fucking law. Adrenaline this is a film I wanted to like, but it's so short that it might as well be nothing. And it's so uneventful that, again, it should be fucking nothing. Like, nothing really happens in this fucking movie. Adrenaline my ass. Rocky and Bullwinkle, I don't think it's as bad as people make out to be. And I did not grow up watching Rocky and Bullwinkle. I haven't seen much of their cartoons, but I like the movie. No, it's not as good as Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I didn't think it would be. But I thought that the two anime characters had some nice banter, and it was breaking the fourth wall. It had some clever gags. I mean, I didn't like... What the fuck was her name? Piper Parabo as the 
agent, female agent that's with Rocky Bullwinkle should just them, been them by themselves. But I didn't hate this like other people did. But Banzai, fun film. Oh, Peter Will will talk about this, but he won't talk about fucking Leviathan or Streamers. Q for Wellness. I actually enjoyed this film. I thought it was pretty good. I actually want to review this sometime. I know my friend Mike reviewed it, but I like this film. I'll put it over here. This is a pretty good flick. It's a bit too long. That's my one gripe. It's way too long. Yeah, it's not a bit too long. It's way too long. But I enjoyed the story I was telling. I love the, the visual aesthetics of it. And uh, it was ambitious. I'll say that. It was an ambitious movie. Akira. This is the DVD that has the three audio tracks. Including the original English track that I remember seeing this on VHS. Where he was voiced by the guy who did uh, Leonardo in the 80's Ninja Turtle cartoons. Well, early 90's Turtles cartoons. And thankfully this does have that dub on there. Extras, trailers, commercials, trailer. Not much for extras. to said it's a 25th anniversary, but... Well, I would say this is my favorite anime. I'm not a big anime guy, I'm sorry, but I do like this film. Quite a bit. Alice Cross. I didn't hate this movie. I know I'm supposed to. I think it's better than fucking his Badia shit. Yeah, I would have preferred Idris Elba. I think Idris Elba would have been a, much, a better Alice Cross. But Tucker, I don't think he did that bad of a job. I like Matthew Fox as the villain. Edward Burns. I thought it was actually surprising that his wife dies in the film. I didn't see that coming. Uh, my one issue is the shaky cam fight at the end is god awful. Piss poor editing. Uh, whoever did that should be fired. But as it is, I didn't hate the film. I, that was fine for what it is. Oh fuck, there's another layer. I forgot how big these boxes are. I always forget how big these boxes are. This is the three pack with the bean, the dark, and creatures from the abyss. The bean, I remember seeing that cover back in the day on VHS and being creeped out by it. And uh, I like the movie. Uh, the dark, I thought this, I know all my friends didn't like the film, but I thought this was pretty decent. The ending especially is pretty batshit insane. And Preacher in the Abyss, I remember having some fun with the uh, effects of this movie. The lower budgeted effects. It's kind of a weird cover too. It makes it seem like an animated film when it's not. We have an 8 pack which has... Legend of Sorrow Creek, Prom Night, I Am Omega, Below, Evil Bomb, Meridium, Demonic Toys, and Decadent Evil. I think I got this because, yeah, Demonic Toys, which I gave a watch, I did not like it. I prefer Dollman versus Demonic Toys. Uh, Below, which I do like the film. I think that's the best film in this pack. I do like I Am Omega as well. Below is a good, like, ghost story, horror film. In a submarine. As by David Tui, who did the arrival. <clears throat> Beer lead. This is a fun flick. It was supposed to be Ralph Macho in this kind of movie. Uh, no one really talks about this flick, but uh, I thought this is pretty damn entertaining. Beer lead. That makes me want to watch it again. I know I have the first one. I don't know where the hell it went. But. Oh no, this is the first one. Okay. For some reason, I... the sequel. Okay, I don't have the sequels. This is the first Beastmaster. Special Divimax edition. 
Okay, I don't have the sequels though. I think there's a two. I know there's a two. I think there's a three as well. I barely remember them. I know two was through the portal of time. They were in modern times. This is the EVP movies, which sad to say are better than the Ridley Scott shit we got nowadays. Sad but true, in my opinion. Never thought I'd say that. Armageddon, this is the Criterion Collection. I like the effects. I like the music. Oh, this movie, though... I don't know. It just feels long. And... Steve Buscemi got on my nerves. Especially when they got on the asteroid. Oh, it's just not my favorite Michael Bay film. Armageddon. Although I still watch it over Deep Impact. If that says anything. Cloak and Dagger, which I remember not minding, and The Wizard. This is the advertisement for Nintendo. But it is what it is. This is the 30th anniversary Ultimate Edition of Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Really enjoy the film. One of Spielberg's best movies. Clue. I think I actually have this on Blu-ray, but... Fun comedy. I believe I reviewed that on the channel. I know I reviewed this on the channel, Cloverfield. I quite enjoy it. I have the film on Blu-ray over there. Next up we have The Collector and the Collection. I know they're making the third one. It's not needed, because I thought The Collection ended things absolutely perfect. You cannot get more of a perfect ending than you have in the collection, so they're going to ruin it. Because they got milk franchises. It's like every fucking franchise has to be milked. But these two I really enjoyed. Really enjoyed this. I believe... I believe I reviewed these. Could be wrong on that. Contact. This is a film I enjoy. Granted, the ending... It's like all that build-up, but I get what they were going with, so it didn't make me as bad as other people. I had to deal with it, but uh, Joey Foster did a wonderful job. You have John Hurt, Tom Skerritt, Angela Bassett, James Woods, Beth McConaughey. I always forget Robert Zemeckis did this. Pretty forgotten film, but I enjoyed Contact. I actually want to watch that again. That's another good way to do it. It's like, oh, I haven't seen that movie in a while. Probably some of these I'll do reviews for when I do watch them again. Sorry for the squeaking chair. The Contract, Morgan Freeman, John Cusack. Worth the watch for the two actors. John Cusack's with his kid out in the woods. Uh, Morgan Freeman's an assassin. I forget all the things that happen, but I know it's John Tuesday and his son out in the woods, and they have Morgan Freeman in custody, and I think people are coming after them. Yeah, the contract. <clears throat> Convoy, this is a really shitty DVD. I know there's like a Blu-ray. Maybe one day I'll pick that up. This one, do not get from Cheesy Flips. Should have known with a stupid name like that. There's shit missing in the movie. The quality is garbage. And until I get on Blu-ray, I'll just keep the DVD. But this is a garbage release. Do not ever pick up anything from cheesy flicks. Again, should have known. <clears throat> Creature. I think this was an out-of-print DVD. This is a... Peter Benchley novel that they adapted with Craig T. Nelson, Kim Control, about a man who's half man, half shark. The problem is it's way too fucking long. It's 173 minutes. You could tell this whole story in 90 minutes. In fact, that'd be an interesting thing someone would do, is take the movie and edit it down to 90 minutes. I think you can do it very easily, too. 
This is before I had the, I do have the Critters box set, but before that I had this DVD set. I like all four Critters films. The second one's my favorite. Crocodile Dundee 1, 2, and 3. I do have the first two on Blu-ray. I keep this for the third one, which I like. Not as good as the first two, but I like the Crocodile Dundee movies. I have, I believe I have reviews of those on the channel. Cry Wolf. This is a film I don't remember much about, to be honest. I know John Bon Jovi's in it. But yeah, I don't remember much about this fucking film. Was this some ending like no one really died or something? I gotta watch that again. I don't remember a damn thing about it. Cube. This is a gift I got from someone overseas. Very nice person. I like Cube. The sequels are useless, but I like the first one. The ending... These are a little bad taste in my mouth, but I like the concept. I like the the look of the film. I like it. Cujo. I believe this film has a Blu-ray, which I don't have, but uh, I'll stick for the DVD right now. Good killer dog movie. Curse to the Bite. This is, I showed this before, and this has the first curse, which I remember not minding. You have uh, John Schneider from Dukes of Hazard. You have... Claude Atkins. You also have uh, Will Wheaton from Star Trek Next Generation. I remember my mind in the curse. A lot of weird, trippy stuff happens in that film. Got this for the West Craven Collection. Cursed, which is one of his worst. Dracula 2000, I don't remember much about other than Rob Butler plays Dracula, which was interesting. Cyber Tracker. Okay, I, I was going to say, I know I have a sequel. Pretty f decent, uh, fun movies. The Cybertracker films. To me, some of the better Don the Dragon Wilson movies. But yeah, some pretty entertaining action set pieces in these films. Sequel. And first one. Dark City, which I have reviewed this on the channel. This was a very nice gift from someone overseas. Uh, really enjoyed this movie. Again, I, I believe I, I believe I have reviewed this on the channel. And I think I do, but love the visual aesthetics of this movie. Love the world that it created. Sci-fi triple feature. The reason I have this, well, Dark Breed has some fun action scenes. And Steel Frontier is the best one of the three. That's a sci-fi western action film with uh, oh, what's his name, Joel Lara. Some really good action sequences for a directed video film. And then Alien Intruder, some lame movie. Billy Dee Williams is barely in it. You also have over 40 minutes of movie trailers, which is pretty cool. I think these are PM Entertainment films, which, that's a pretty good company. A lot of their films I like. The After Tomorrow, I liked okay. I don't love it, but I liked it okay. Dennis Quaid was good in the film. The Dark Crystal, I enjoy. I know they're doing a sequel for Netflix or whatever, but I don't have Netflix. But uh, that's cool they're doing a sequel. I do like the first one. Darkest Falls, I remember really enjoying this film. I saw this at the theater back in the day. Love the idea of the Tooth Fairy being utilized in this way. The lead actor sadly passed away, Chaney Clay. But I thought he did a really nice job in the lead role. Sad that he passed away way too soon. But I really like Darkest Falls. Date Night, comedy I had fun with. I thought these two worked well together. Have this on Blu-ray, but the remake Dawn of the Dead saw this in the theater back in the day. Great remake. I picked this up for dirt cheap because I was ranting on it. Day of the Dead. Vegetarian Zombie! Steve Miner, probably his worst film he's ever done. And he won't do a commentary for Friday 32 and 3, but he did a commentary for this. 
Days of Thunder, I want to pick this up on Blu-ray, but uh, really enjoy this film. I might even enjoy this more than Top Gun, to be honest. And come on, man. Mellow Yellow. Mellow Yellow. And no, I did not start drinking Mellow Yellow because of this movie, but come on. Mel I can't think of another movie that has Mellow Yellow in it as much as this, so... And I love the musical score by Hans Zimmer. Uh, one of my favorite scores he's done. I enjoy Days of Thunder. DC Cab, directed by Joe Schumacher, one of his first movies, and I thought this was an enjoyable comedy. I thought this was a lot of fun. Great cast, yeah. I mean, Mr. T. You got Gary Busey, Paul Rodriguez, the Barbarian Brothers, Adam Baldwin. Fun movie, DC Cab. Dead Alive, wish this had a Blu ray. If it does, it's probably out of print or something. But I wish this had a new Blu ray, but a big special edition Blu ray. Because this is one of the best zombie films, and definitely the goriest zombie film. Love it. One of Peter Jackson's best movies. Do not know why that doesn't have... I mean, it's Peter Jackson, you would think he'd have some pull. Dead Heat, I like this film. The ending... Eh, I'm not sure about the ending, but... Because uh, it seems like he's having a fun movie, and then things turn really dark, almost too sudden. Just like someone they were protecting, she's dead and falling apart, and then his partner is dead, and then like, what the fuck? Like, we're having fun, now you just turn like a right corner of darkness. And then they try to have some fun in the last moments, but it's like, okay. I didn't like the way this turned out, I would have preferred more Lethal Weapon, but uh, I like the film for what it is. It has some nice effects moments, and I thought these two worked well together. Death of Ian Stone, I have a review of this on the channel, I believe. Yeah, I could be wrong. I think the best film in the After Dark Horror Fest, because the story of that was really interesting. Some of the effects, not the best, but uh, again, really good story and good acting in this one. It's a story that made me interested to see what was, what's going on. This is a gift from a very nice guy. I enjoyed this film, The Deadly Spawn. This was a fun, uh, low-budget movie. Some very entertaining special effects. And quite a few features. The Dead Zone, one of Cronenberg's best films. Christopher Walken, one of his best performances. Death Machine, very underrated film. I know I've reviewed this on the channel. I know I have. Very underrated movie, in my opinion. It's a slow build, but to me, the slow build has some great payoffs. And it's very, it has a quirky sense of humor, too. I think some people might not get that, but it, it definitely has a tongue in cheek quality, but it's not so obvious. I, I mean, I don't know how to put it, but uh, really, really underrated film. And the Blu-ray of Death Machine. Glad this is an overseas Blu-ray. I believe from Germany. I don't know why Germany like gets all the best stuff. I don't know what it is. Like Germany gets like the hit show on Blu-ray. Like it's always. I don't know what it is. Like I guess Germany loves their movie goers. I like the U.S. But Death Machine. Love the poster too. This is a beautiful poster. And is the uncut version. And in Y screen. <clears throat> Death Watch, remember this being an interesting I, I wanna say World War One horror movie. Well directed. I remember this being a very well directed film, Death Watch. Definitely worth a look. Death Ship. 
not everyone's cup of tea, bit slow in spots. There's some things I would have done differently with the third act, but I like that ship. I like it a lot more than Ghost Ship. I have this on Blu-ray, but Deep Blue Sea, one of the best films of 1999, one of my favorite shark movies. Brandon Harlan did a wonderful job. Thomas Jane is badass in that film. Deep Rising. People who know my channel, they know this is a favorite of mine. Love Deep Rising. I have this on Blu-ray somewhere over there. Love this film to death. I do have this film on Blu-ray right now, thanks to a nice guy, but uh, this is the DVD, and it doesn't really work much anymore, so maybe I'll toss it, but uh, I would say my favorite Dario Argento film. Deep Search 6, this is a nice gift from a person from overseas, because this, it's in widescreen, and there's some features from back in the day. It's not long, a couple minutes, but still... Considering this film is on DVD in the U.S., probably out of print, in full screen, I think. This is actually in widescreen and look like better picture quality. Had uh, again a couple of features from back in the day, so I like this film. Not as good as Leviathan, but I do like this movie. I've reviewed this on the channel. Good flick, in my opinion. Uh, Jet Li's The Defender. I don't remember much about this, to be honest. Whether that's a good or bad thing, I don't know. Demolition University. I know I have Demolition High. I believe I have it on a DVD-R somewhere, but I don't remember where. I, but, uh... I don't know if the first one got in that actual DVD. I mean, I don't have it. Again, I had a DVD-R. I don't know. And this is directed by Kevin S. Tenney, the guy who did... I believe he did Night of the Demons. I remember this not being as good as Demolition High. By at best, as a time waster, but it's like, hmm. The Descent. I do enjoy the film. The sequel sucks dick. Devil's Advocate. Really... Really good uh, acting performance by Al Pacino. I mean, he plays the devil. He's relishing the role. I see Keanu Reeves play off against Al Pacino. You also have Charlie's Throne. Craig T. Nelson. A bit long. Two hours and 20-some minutes. But uh, I do remember enjoying this flick. Just too long. It was really my only gripe with it. You know, someone's actually asking me about this, and I had not seen it yet, because this has Roy, uh, no, Richard Crenna, Devil Dog, The Hound from Hell. Gonna have to give this a watch sometime. I think I did watch it, but I don't remember much about it, so... I would say I need to give a rewatch of it sometime. The Devil Dog, The Hound from Hell. The Devil's Tomb, remember this being a time waster for the cast, Cooper Green Jr., you got Henry Rollins, Ron Perlman, group of soldiers go to this top secret Middle Eastern archaeological site, a little bit of horror mixed in, <coughs> yeah, I remember this being a time waster. <coughs> Dice Rules. I like Andrew Dice Clay. This is one of the stand-ups. <clears throat> this is a two-patch ground control with Kiefer Sutherland and Robert Sean Leonard and Diplomatic Siege with Peter Weller and Tom Berenger. I'll be honest, I don't remember much about these movies. Hey folks, it's hard to keep all those movies in one's head. Disturbia? I do like this film. I know Shia LaBeouf is bashing insane for some reason nowadays, but I do think this is a well-made flick. And uh, in fact, I think I want to watch that again sometime. Dr. Deedles, I enjoy this. Rest in peace, Larry Drake. Thought he's pretty entertaining. Had some fun, imaginative kills. I always remember the scene where it's a flashback and he was a kid and he hid in his mom's body and like pops out of the body and all bloodied up. That's a trippy scene. Dog Soldiers. I have this on Blu-ray. 
But I keep the DVD because I swear the DVD has better, it looks better on DVD. The Blu-ray looks like a shitty groundhouse film. So I just kept the DVD and the Blu-ray I kept for the features. <clears throat> I, I do have Dol this on Blu-ray over there, but this is Dollman. One of my favorite films from Full Moon. This might be my favorite film from Full Moon Entertainment, now that I think about it. I mean, I like Tim Thomerson. I like the idea of a guy this tall, but his gun is so powerful, it makes these big fucking holes in the people. I wish this got more of a franchise. His only guy was Dollman vs. Demonic Toys, which... Half the film is just stock footage, so I wish we had got a Dollman too. I really do. I have this on Blu-ray, but Doom, I reviewed this just a few weeks ago. I enjoy the film. Donnie Darko, this is the director's cut, and it actually has a commentary with the director and Kevin Smith. I thought it was a pretty fun commentary track. Because Kevin Smith is like, I don't know what's going on, man. You explain it to me. <laughs> but uh, I like this film. It's trippy. It's a bit confusing. But it's pretty out there. Pretty uh, original. Don't say a word. This is a film I wanted to give a look because of Michael Douglas. I like Michael Douglas, but I don't remember much about this movie, to be honest. It stars Brittany Murphy as well. I do remember where she's like, I'll never tell. Yeah, this is a film I need to rewatch. Double T, this is a film I wanted to watch because I like the trailer. The one scene they're on the train where Orlando Jones is pretending to be Eddie Griffin. That was the funniest bit in the trailer, and sadly that's the only funny bit in the movie. Cause they, you think the movie's going to be more about them pretending to be the other, but they only do that very, very little. And, uh, and, yeah, I thought they were actually going to do the switching of the two, pretend to be the other, throughout the entire film. They don't do that, so, yeah. And I like Orlando Jones. Eddie Griffin, not so much. But I like Orlando Jones, but he just didn't pick the right projects. Draco did in Loving It. This is a fun movie. Uh, one of my favorite Mel Brooks films. Cool that he worked with Leslie Nielsen. I actually want to give that another look. Dreadnet, I know this is on Blu-ray, maybe I'll pick that up sometime, but I like the movie, and I have it on DVD. thought these two worked well together. Never watched much of the TV show. And this should be in the Blu-ray section, but it's here. Dolls, one of my favorite Stuart Gordon movies, with quite a few features. So, Good flick, Dolls. And now we're getting to the bottom of the box. So this is like five hours long. <laughs> um, this is one someone's gave me, Logan, the movie and special features. This is a film that's very underrated. Run deserves an actual DVD release. Very underrated film with Patrick Dempsey. And deserves a lot more than it's gotten. That over there. Ah, my <laughs> Ernest collection. I do miss Jim Verney. I do like Ernest. I like a lot of his movies. Uh... Okay, I was going to say. Here you have Ernest Goes to Camp, Ernest Dear Stupid, and Ernest. Goes to jail. My favorite is Ernest Steer Stupid. They are ones I have some fun with. You have Ernest Saves Christmas, which I really enjoy. People uh, who don't know, uh, Jim Varney played this character in a bunch of TV commercials. He was a TV pitch man. And a lot of those commercials, including from Elio. And they, it was becoming popular on commercials, so they're like, let's have him do a movie. And I think the first movie was Ernest Goes to Camp. 
and then Ernest Saves Christmas. Ernest Writes Again, which is actually one of my favorites of his as well. Uh, not much of a cover, but uh, this was a very nice gift from someone from overseas. I never know if I want to say their name because some people, I really, some people don't like when I say their name. So then I just don't say anyone's name because some people are like, oh, don't say my name because then they'll ask me for stuff. So I'm like, okay, so I just don't, if you want me to say your name, just say it in the comment section and let people know. But, you know, I just don't want to, I know it's a weird thing, but it's happened before, so just in case. But this is a great gift because I don't think this film, this one's not on DVD in the U.S. from what I understand. I don't know why. It's, I, it's one of my favorites. At least when I was a kid. I still enjoy it. Here you have his lesser movies. Not a big fan of these. I like Jim Varney, but Ernest in the Army, Ernest Goes After, Ernest Goes to School. Ernest Goes to School is when I thought it really started to go down. I'm like, eh. This one I have because it has Slam Dunk Ernest on it. Which he, that was like, yeah, it deals with these shoes and I know Kareem Abdul Jabbar is in it. Uh, this one, I got this mainly because it has. Ernest Greatest Hits Volume 1 and Volume 2. Those are actually uh, his commercials, which is a lot of fun to watch. And this is the TV show. It didn't last long. They tried to be like uh, Pee Wee's Playhouse. I actually liked it more than Pee Wee's Playhouse. Hey, Bird, it's me. I'm on TV. I do remember this when I was a kid. I, I enjoyed it. You know what, I'm going to put these over here. One day, I'm going to do an Ernest Marathon. I know like five people will watch it, but you know, one day I'm going to do it. I'm going to set it actually over here so I remember. One day I'm going to do it. Maybe not anytime soon, but one day. Alright, let's get into the stretch here. <clears throat> the Fly, classic film. The Fly 2, good sequel, fun effects. Got this for 50 cents because uh, actually my mom liked it and then she gave it back. <laughs> I think she got her copy. She likes this film. I don't know why the Fallout remake. I don't know why she liked it. But if she got her own copy, here you go, I'm like, I don't want it, but okay, I'll take it, because maybe one day I'll do, like, a rant commentary on it. Shows how little fuck they gave a fuck about the movie, because someone wrote their name on it. They didn't give a shit. Fool's Gold, I remember not minding it, because I like Matthew McConaughey in the film. We also have Donald Sutherland. Kevin Hart's in this movie? Fuck, I don't remember that. I haven't seen this film forever, but... Forbidden World, no Roger Corman production. None of this happens in the movies, so... It's a good cover-up, but it doesn't happen in the film. I remember having some fun with this movie. Forbidden World. Forgotten. A nice, uh... A decent take on alien abduction. You're not supposed to know it's alien abduction at first, but that's what it is. I think that's why I liked it, because usually these kind of movies, it's they're dead, or you died, you don't know it yet, or some kind of ghost. The fact I went to an alien abduction angle, it kind of made me like, oh, okay. Uh, I thought Julian Moore did a good job. Forrest Gump, a lot of people hate this movie nowadays, but I still enjoy this film. Still like Forrest Gump. Fortress, I believe I reviewed this on the channel. Good film with Christopher Lambert. And this, uh, I have this because uh, Hollow Man, great movie, have that on Blu-ray. Hollow Man 2, piece of shit sequel, one day I'll rant on it. 
Fortress 2, eh, not that good of a movie. The Harvest, I like the video for air, but the, the movie itself, kind of boring. But, nice to have for the collection. Fracture, solid movie because of the cast. Ryan Gosling, go up against Anthony Hopkins. That was a pretty decent thriller. And it was nice to see these two play off each other. Frailty, I reviewed this when Bill Paxton passed away because he directed and starred in it. Did a great job with this, Bill Paxton. Did really, really like the twist too. Because it was like a really, like, oh shit, ballsy twist. Frankenfish from the director of Spawn. It was so goofy of an idea that I kind of had some dumb fun with it. Frightened fish. I mean, the fucking title. Yeah. Frightened fish. Uh, the Friday movies. And All About the Benjamins, which I love. All About the Benjamins is hilarious. And the Friday movies. The best one's the first one. Although I do like the second one. The third one, I don't like as much. I think the third one's pretty lame. The Frighteners. Last great Peter Jackson film, in my opinion. Fritz the Cat and Nine Lives of Fritz the Cat. Both I really enjoy. By Ralph Bakshi. I enjoy these films quite a bit. Frogs. I had dumb fun with this movie because Sam Elliott is the star. It was cool to see Sam Elliott in this kind of film. and It was so weird. Uh, I, I, I enjoyed it for what it is. Uh, then Cheech and Jones Up in Smoke, one of my favorite comedies. Um, I actually have that on Blu-ray over there. And uh, I have the, the second one, next movie over there too. That, that's a favorite of mine. You also have Nice Dreams, which is okay. It's an okay film. Still Smoking, Decent. And I bought this a long time ago. Haven't had a chance to rewatch the film. Things are tough all over. Last time I saw this, I think the DVD I had was scratched up, so I got this. As you see, I haven't watched it yet again, but uh, maybe that's another thing to do one day is a Cheech and Chong marathon. Child's Play, classic. The remake I'm curious about. This is the only way to have Child's Play 2 and 3. I wish they got... I think they're on Blu-ray? But they have nothing on them? Maybe I'll pick them up someday, because I like Child's Play 2 and 3 a lot. And I don't want them just on this shitty set. So yeah, I'll have to pick them up sometime. Chop them all. Great, this finally got a Blu-ray. Much better picture quality, quite a few features. I don't know what the fuck happened. Vestron was releasing stuff, and now they don't do anything anymore. I don't know why. I was hoping they did Watchers and Watchers too, but that never happened. Sad to say. <clears throat> Chronicles of Rick, the Chronicles of Riddick, which I didn't mind. I definitely think it's better than the third film, but not as good as Pitch Black. I have this film on Blu-ray, but Chud, very fun creature feature flick. City of Living Dead. Uh, I remember. Um, is is this the Geeks of Hell? Or the, I I can't remember much about this movie to be honest. Sad to say, had to rewatch it. Plus in 1984, classic film. And Plus in 1999, sequel I really enjoy. Uh, underrated sequel. I reviewed these on the channel, I believe. Clint Present Danger, my favorite of the Jack Ryan films. I do have Patriot Games around here somewhere. Now we're really at the home stretch. Endangered Species, this is not in the movie, this is false advertising, so stupid. I, this is a time waste here because you have Eric Roberts and John Reese davies 
and uh, they go up against Arnold Vosloo. And I like the actors involved. Actually, I think Arnold Vosloo is not the villain. Because he's doing an investigation of his own, and you find out that... I don't know, I thought the story... I, I forget what it... It's been a while since I've seen this. I think Arnold Voss is another alien that doesn't want to kill this alien because it's an endangered species and wants to preserve it, but then ultimately has to do it. Something like that. I, it was cool to see. I remember Eric Roberts being pretty good in the movie. Even Destruction, this is there, but this is nice to see for Gregory Hines. He did a really good job in the movie. I believe I have this on Blu-ray, but Vet Horizon, wonderful space horror movie. Evolver, pretty decent flick. Underrated film. I thought the cast worked well together. I thought it had some pretty decent action sequences, too. Evolver, not that bad of a film at all. Evolution, this is a very entertaining comedy, very underrated. Sad that this film didn't do anything when it came out. It bombed badly. I did review the Exorcist films on the channel. And this is how I was able to see them. The first one, which I'm honestly not a fan of. The sequel, which is dog shit. The third, which I do have as on Blu-ray, is my favorite. And then the Dominion and the alternate at the beginning. I think I said I like this more than Dominion, but I can't remember. Yeah, that's the Exorcist films. I do have reviews of those on the channel for those interested. Explorers, great movie until the third act where it shits the bed. Extreme Measures, very underrated film. Doesn't get talked about like it should. Faces of Death, I only have this because long, long ago I was on a stream with the guys from DeadPit.com, which is these guys I followed for many years. And they had a contest and I won and I got this. And the movie itself, I don't care for, but it has a very interesting commentary. Very interesting stories on how this was made. This was sent to me a long time ago. Family Dog, it's a cartoon. The Faculty, I actually don't mind this flick. Robert, Robert Rodriguez film that no one really talks about. We have the first Fast and Furious. Too Fast, Too Furious, which I, I saw this in the theater in white. I actually want to watch that again. And for the Paul Walker collection, Fast and Furious 4. You might not know that from the title, but it's Fast and Furious 4. Uh, two really good films, Fatal Beauty and Running Steered. Fun comedy, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. The only good one of the three, Feast. This did not need sequels. Loved how gory and inventive the film was. I thought it was pretty clever. I uh, had some nice surprises. And again, the gore effects are wonderful. To me, the only two good Final Destination films, I think the second one's the best. But I really enjoy these two. You did not need to kill that guy off, though. You could have had some other explanation, but other than that, really enjoy these movies. The rest I thought sucked. Starting with this one, because I bought this to give it a shot and was let down. Found Destination 3. This was a lame. And then they got lamer. They yeah, found Destination 3. Final Voyage. Uh, this was dirt cheap, and I think because this has a commentary track. 
I don't know, I was just curious as to what the fuck could be all the commentary track for this movie. But yeah, it wasn't worth it. This is a pretty shitty film. I mean, Dylan Walsh as your good guy, Ice-T as your villain. I'd rather watch Speed 2 Cruise Control than this fucking movie. Yeah. Firewall, alright movie, probably the Harrison Ford film no one ever remembers. It's forgettable, but Harrison Ford, it was fun to watch for him. And then Paul Bedney as your villain. Same guy would be the Vision and the Avengers films. Uh, they did a good job in the movie. Fire in the Sky, probably the creepiest movie dealing with alien abduction. Worth a look just for that alone. Five Across the Eyes. Uh, anytime I... No one likes this film. Despite those. No one likes this film. But, I don't know, this film... The way it was done was interesting. Because it was these girls... It all like takes place in their car. Within the inside of their car. And they're being chased by, like, the soccer mom from hell. And it doesn't have a bullshit ending. I just see people now liking the format it's filmed on. And, uh, they might find the girls annoying. But, I don't know, this is one of those films I did not mind. Fletch, fun movie. The sequel I don't remember much about. Fled. This is one I got to give another look because I barely remember this film. Lawrence Fishburne, Stephen Baldwin. I remember, the, we got a fled. Now we got to flee, we got to go. We got a fled. That's a line of dialogue. Kevin Hooks, I think the same guy who did Passenger 57 did this. And, uh, maybe a time waster? I, again, anytime I see this film, I don't remember anything about it afterward. Go figure. The Flock. Worth a look for Richard Gere's performance. So, I like seeing it for that. His best one to me is uh, Mothman Prophecies, but I do like that film. But that's it. That's uh, what's in the box for that film. So, if you like this, want to see more, let me know. So, thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.